uh, the host of CNN Smirconish, CNN political commentator Michael Smirconish. He's also an attorney. Michael, good morning to you. Look, it's all fun and games for the late night host, but this is a lump of coal late after Christmas for the Democrats and really a gift to Republicans. And it seems, Don, like a lot of unforced errors. Yeah. I was watching the presser yesterday from the White House, Corrine Jean-Pierre, and all I kept thinking of is Lanny Davis. Lanny Davis, the Clinton confidant, the crisis manager, who mm -hmm. wrote a book. The premise is, tell it early, tell it all, tell it yourself. They did none of those things. And the question that remains is, why on Tuesday, when the president acknowledged the discovery from Penn back in November, wasn't there also some acknowledgement of the discovery in Delaware on December 20? Did he not know on Tuesday that that discovery had been made? Boy, that would be really curious. And if he did know, why didn't he say something? It seemingly is turning what may be a benign situation into something much worse. They have to address it today. And they can't put the White House spokesperson out there right. to again and again say he takes this seriously. That's not enough. Who should come out then? Do you think it, do you think it should be Karine Jean-Pierre who comes out and tells the story, or should it be someone no. else? And, no. Okay. No. And, I, and, don't, don't, and the other story, there's conflicting. Fair to her. Go on. Go on. I don't think it's fair to her. I, I, there's one person <laughs> who needs to be heard from. It's the president <laughs> of the United States. He ought to be out there today and try and shorten the extension of, of this story. Why don't we play for folks what he did say um, about his Corvette in the locked garage? Listen. By the way, my Corvette's in a locked garage, okay? So it's not like you're sitting out in the street. Like you think all of these statements just raise more questions than give answers. And it, it sort of seemed there like he was, um, you know, Brushing it off. I mean, it, a lock garage is no place for classified documents, just like Mar-a-Lago is no place for classified documents. Well, no doubt. I, I mean, there's and, and I, I get all the differences between the two stories. Yes. You know, seemingly Donald Trump put his thumb in the eye of the FBI. There's no evidence that the Biden folks did that or the current president did that. But, but by the same token, the way in which they're handling it, you know, I, I don't want to say the cover up is often worse than the crime, because, of course, then people say, well, what's the crime and what are you insinuating? How about if I say this? The handling of this might be far worse yeah. than whatever the underlying facts are. And that's the impression that's being <clears throat> left in many people's minds. I think also the timing question that you raised, which is there was a statement from the special counsel inside the White House Monday night acknowledging, yes, there were documents found back in November. They did not acknowledge the second documents found in the garage, which obviously has raised security concerns, even though we know they found those back in December and they told DOJ and the National Archives about it then. The other timing question, though, is the fact that this was found about a week before the midterm elections and nothing was said publicly about it. Right. I'm sure with, you know, Anthony Weiner on the brain and the impact of those those late discoveries in the presidential cycle in the past, the explanation that was offered, Caitlin, on that yesterday at the presser as I was listening, which was one of, well, the, the, the search, the investigation was still ongoing, as if the president could say anything about the December 20 discovery until they'd searched everywhere. I don't buy into that. Well, why, why didn't they make an immediate disclosure back on December 20? I, I think transparency demands that. Transparency is not, as she defined it yesterday, sharing information with the Justice Department. No, transparency is sharing with the American people what I think we have a right to know. So uh, what's interesting, as you said, you know, get out in front and tell the story. They put out a statement, and then yeah. they had to go back and revise a statement saying, you know, and said, oh, wait, wait a minute, we didn't notify the Department of Justice. We notified, um, we first notified the National Archives. I'm not sure how big a deal is that. But the question, the question that, I have and Caitlin has been having all uh, along as well is well, why are, how are lawyers why are lawyers packing boxes or looking through boxes was there something was it the the Trump document investigation the Mar-a-Lago investigation that triggered this and and them saying hey look we better go check to make sure that our house is in order and then they stumbled upon this is that what happened oh, oh Don you, Don you have to believe right that individuals 
the living presidents, people who have served in the senior level of government ever since the Mar-a-Lago debacle are probably examining, you know, every storage locker that they have to make sure that they don't have a similar problem. My hunch is the same of, is, as yours, that that probably touched off the process. As an attorney, what I, what I see going on here is like the, the president being kept out of the loop deliberately as to what those documents are. Why? So that he can't be asked by the press, hey, what was found in your garage? I don't know. They didn't tell me. Wait a minute. That's even worse as an answer. You mean you don't even know what those documents were, either at the Penn Center or near the Corvette? Just bad, bad, bad. Tell it early. Tell it all. <laughs> tell it yourself. Like today. Yeah. Like right today. On. Like today. Cannot argue with Amen. that. Thank you, Michael right. Smirkanis. <laughs> We'll see you this weekend. See you guys. Appreciate it. Okay, catch Thank Michael's you. show, 9 a.m. Eastern, uh, right here on Saturday morning.